Welcome to the Next Generation Podcast. We are back here with Nas Harrison, who is currently the wide receiver at Dartmouth. This is the first episode of 2024, as we've had a busy year so far. Nas, welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for having me, man. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell our audience a little bit, you know, how you found your love for the game of football growing up. So, you know, how I found my love for the game of football growing up was really through my um, my older brother, Josh. He was um, he was a safety at our local high school back home, and he had a bunch of offers. Ultimately, ended up going to Sacred Heart and just watching him and his dedication to the game, how, um, how loved he was by people, how many people valued his gameplay, and just watching him image his, um, his play at safety after um, – Sean Taylor has just inspired me to want to play the game. Like, I love to see the hard work that he put in. And it just poured into me. And I just fell in love with the game. Been playing it since Pop Warner. It's like six, six years old. That's awesome. And it's nice to have, you, like you said, an older brother that's, you know, being able to pave that path. Makes it easier to kind of follow in those footsteps, but still go on your own journey at the same time, right? And so kind of leaning into more of the rest of your family, as well as your friends, teammates, now fans, of course. Like, how does that support play into to your game and everything um, that you aspire to be right now in your career? Well, I come from a family of athletes. So, like, my dad, uh, he played football um, at Arizona State for a short spell before he went into um, the Marines. Uh, like I said, my brother played, my cousins played. So everyone is just, like, family-wise, we're all in the sports, whether it be football, basketball, boxing, whatever. Um, the fan base, like, my, my brother Hayes, he was my biggest fan, like, my biggest fan. So... Like, the support that I get from the, the group of people, like, everyone says it takes a village to raise a child, and I believe it really does because if if not for them, I don't know what I would be doing. Like, just the support, the, like, if I'm not, if I wasn't doing my best or I could be doing better, they would be blunt and get on me. Like, hey, man, you want to go to the league. This is what you got to do. You got you to gotta work Correct. harder. You got to do better. So just having that in my ear and having those morals instilled in me, like I can always be doing better. There's always someone working harder than me. And just leaving no doubt on the field or off the field where I'm working out with uh, my trainer back home, just getting every rep possible and getting as much as I can out of myself. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and to kind of you know, segue more into your football team at Dartmouth, you know, I know you, you play wide receiver there. What does that camaraderie look like? You know, what makes that team so special to you? Um, as you've been part of that organization? So um, as soon as I, I came in here, um, everyone, like I came for a visit last year around this time, came on a visit, and immediately the guys took to me. We took to each other, and they treated me like a brother. Like So it, it was a no-brainer making a decision to come here, and it's been great. Um, what what pushes each other is the, the want to be great. You know, you have to want to be great, and – these guys, they want to be great. We all aspire for championships in our career. And, you know, Corsairs, course, back-to-back champions, man. Um, just awesome. they, they want to be great. You know, we push each other in the weight room, um, on the field, getting workouts in early in the morning. Some guys get it early in the morning. Some guys go in the afternoon because, you know, some people have early classes. But um, just, like, the leadership. The older guys, we um, – we instill values into the younger guys, like working hard, you know, not missing a rep because, you know, you got you got older guys in front of you, but you still got to work hard. You got to have you got to have the want to be great. So really just the, the want to be great and the leadership from the quarterback position through every skill position or whether it be line or um, even the kickers, like everyone has leadership tendencies on the team. I love that. And I'm sure that translates a lot into the youth that looks up to you, right? You know, whether it's back in your, back home in your community or even where you're at at Dartmouth, you know, being able to to set up an example, have that leadership, be able to sharpen your skills and have your teammates push you to be better, right? And being able to also have the right coaches and support system around you, as you talked earlier about your family and friends and other fans out there that help support you. You know, what does it look like from the coaching perspective uh, of having the right resources around you uh, that helps you, you know, be great in your craft? So um, from the from the coaching aspect, I don't limit myself to just the coaches that are here. So from the coaching aspect as from the coaches that are here, I know that coach is just one phone call away. And they've made that a note on every single meeting that we have. Like they're always one call away. You need anything, call the coach. 
and we'll get you some help, whether it's in the classroom, in the weight room, on the field. You want someone to come throw passes with you when the quarterback's not available, even though they're always available, you know. Right. They can they can make that happen, you know. Coaches are a, a valuable necessity here at this campus, and it's it's not like they're they're restricted to only certain people have access to them. No, everyone has access to the coaches, and they can help us, and they have helped us in many different ways. I know when I was going through – um, certain situations on campus, um, football-wise, coaches were right there, you know, advocating and um, giving me insight on what I should do going forward. Or and same for the same for the younger guys. So and like even back home, um, I work with my skills trainer, Coach Mark. Uh, he's the leader of the um, Supreme Athlete Program that I'm um, involved in, and he's he's on me constantly 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 and that's helped me build a mindset of wanting to be better wanting to be as great as i can possibly be so having those resources available and someone to teach me things that i can't do myself or help me craft in certain ways that i'm not able to is amazing especially when it's coming from um not only a coaching standpoint but like an older brother standpoint so it's not right. like this is just my coach. This is someone I can go and talk to when I'm going through stuff. This is someone that's giving me life advice aside from football that's going to help me translate on the field and off the field. Yep, absolutely. No, Nas, you're spot on. And I think that's what, you know, especially a lot of fans right now, you know, they don't see that from being inside, you know, your perspective of an athlete that's actually being able to experience, you know, what it's like to have those resources and tools and guidance and mentorship. I mean, the right support system around you that helps you on and off the field. And, and I think that's what's so crucial is you're able to experience that and shed light to others um, that it is possible to get the right resources and you have to still be persistent and consistent and also just relentless in your pursuit of excellence. Right. And I think it teaches you a lot of life lessons that I'm sure you're, you, you've learned up to this point that helps you as you continue down your your journey. And I think that kind of goes more into what I was going to ask next about just reflecting on this past season you know, has there been any memorable moments or just you know things that stuck out to you the most when you look back on this on this past season? So unfortunately, I didn't get to play this season. Um, the NCA uh, decided that it would be best for me to sit out this season uh, due to um, you know being a transfer. The rules are so conspicuous and tough, but um, right. I did everything up until like a day before the first game. So I went through camp. So I got to go through the camp experience, the scrimmage. And um, I was still allowed to go to the practices, be on the sidelines with the team. So I still got the team experience. And um, what's what, what's the most memorable about this season uh, for football-wise, like actually playing, would have to be like um, when we first got on campus and we went to camp, the one-on-ones, man, just finally getting to showcase and show the coaches, like the hype That's is awesome. real. The hype is absolutely yeah. real. I love one-on-ones. I love competing. Any chance that we got to go against the defense, I was hyped. I was so hyped. But the the best moment for me would probably be when we ran team and there was just like a string of like two, three plays in a row where I'm just catching deep balls in the end zone. And everybody, all the guys are getting hyped. I'm getting hyped. And we had, this, um, we had this thing called the, the black stripe. So um, we have yellow stripes on our helmet. But when you're new or a freshman, um, you get a black stripe over it. So – when you earn your stripes, essentially, yeah. um, you get the stripe taken off. So that was definitely the most memorable moment for me, uh, getting my stripe taken off and awesome. um, like just being accepted by all the guys. But um, from on the sideline standpoint, um, my definitely the, the favorite memory we have of like the team is our first home game, I think it was. I think yeah, I think it was our first. It was our first home game. We played against Curry, and um, it's late in the fourth quarter, and our QB just puts the game on ice. He's not even a runner, you know. He's not the best runner. He he got wheels, but he's not the most you know shifty quarterback. He's not a Mariota, you know. But right. he he had a I think it was like a forty yard touchdown scramble. And it's nighttime, so he's running out the pocket looking for the pass, and there's nothing. He, um, you know, boys a sack, goes through the pocket, up the middle, outside, has, and he hits somebody with a jab, and it just caught us all by surprise. He dropped the dude, and he scores a touchdown. The stadium lights start flickering on and off. It was, 
I, I almost ran on the field and gave him a hug. Met him on the sideline. We were all cheering. It was amazing. That was definitely probably my favorite moment of the season for sure. That's incredible, man. That's awesome. And I think just, you know, cherishing moments like that, you know, you'll reflect on that for, for years and decades to come, right, with all your teammates, all the people around you. And and I think that's what makes sports so special. It's playing at the level that you're at, of course, and uh, and to be able to just, you know, look back and, and enjoy the moment, right? And, 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 you know, as you know, every athlete has their end. And so being able to cherish as many moments as you can and stack those up, um, and learn from everything and, and be able to just really enjoy it at the end of the day. Um, so that's right. that's awesome, Nas. And I think you know, now as, as it's been a hot topic and I wanted to touch base on this in our, in our episode is everything with NIL. Obviously, we know it's been uh, a lot going on. It's uh, you know coming up on year – we're on year three now, and it's still – it feels like it's so new with just so many moving parts and, and things happening. Uh, how has name, image, and likeness and utilizing that helped you with achieving your, your personal goals and everything that you want to do? You know, within your, your professional career as well? Uh, the NIO has helped me by just like giving me a lot more insight because like you said, it's, it's new. So a lot of people are still learning about it. So being able to be part of uh, like an active member of NIO is it's amazing because not many people get the opportunity to, to, to get NIO deals. And, you know, just the other day, one of my roommates was asking me how I did it. I'm like, man, I don't even know how I did it, <laughs> you know? I have no clue. <laughs> it's by the grace of God that I'm able to right. be where I'm at. But just um, learning more, you know, having more insight and um, the opportunity to connect and network with people like yourself. Like, I, I would not have known you if it weren't for NIL, you know? So right. um, just having that opportunity in general moving forward, because I know that um, there's going to be more opportunities, more chances to connect and uh, meet with new people, share experiences, share my story, my background. And uh, through those experiences, I can become as great as possible. You know, I can I can achieve I'm anything trying. that I want to. Absolutely. And I think you also said it best where it's, you know, obviously it, it's great to be able to accumulate that and build your personal brand. But at the same time, email help, whether it's your roommate or other teammates or other people that you know, um, they're athletes experiencing the same thing as you to be able to give a helping hand out um, and provide different resources that you have accessible that can maybe help them out. Maybe it's education or different stuff, or maybe it's them getting on a podcast like this, right? Just different stuff that can really help them share their story, build their personal brand, because it can translate down years to come as you set up a strong foundation that you can benefit from long after your athletic career. And I think that's where a lot of people are starting to pay attention anyway. This is not just a a one-time thing or a quick thing that's going to come and go, you know, this is here to help you build a strong foundation. Um, and I think that's what's, what's so exciting. And, and obviously, you know, some, something that I, I, we always ask in every episode, like if there was a dream deal, you know, any brand that you, you would, you know, aspire to, to collaborate with Nas, what would be something that you had in mind that you would love to, to do Man, a deal with? I, you know, I have these conversations with my dad all the time and um, there's two, there's actually two. But number one for me would have to be Old Spice. I've always been a big fan of the old school Old Spice commercials. I think they're I love so it. hilarious. I've always wanted to be, like, I, I love Old Spice. I'm only ever going to use Old Spice. So Old Spice, if you hear this and you want me, I'm available. Um, yes, sir. I love, I love Nike as well. Um, but the Nike would be more of like a, like, a, um, like a stepping stone, like a way to give back. Um, probably, yep. you know, start my own camp, get my, um, help like my, my trainer, get a bigger facility, you know, just give back to the community and ways to, um, help the youth back home, local boys and girls club, YMCA, stuff like that. That's incredible. And then I think that kind of segues into something I did want to ask about, like, just looking back at like, you know, how you've transpired in your career and grown, you know, now that you have the opportunity to, to be playing at the level that you're at. How do you try to give back to your community, whether it's actively now or we have plans in the future? You know, what are some things that you like to do that, that gives back to, to, the, to the youth and the community that, that you help out? Something I still do um, for my community now and something that I want to do in the future. I'll give you one in one. So something that I still do for my community now, every um, break, whether it's spring break, summer break or winter vacation, I'm tapped in with Supreme Athlete back home. And I'm one of the older guys of that program now, but I still go back and I go to those training sessions and I work out to show the younger kids, like, look, I'm I'm in college playing the sport, but I'm still coming back to help you guys. So while I'm there, I'm, I'm getting my workouts, but I'm helping the younger guys. I'm helping them understand the material, helping them understand the craft, how to, how to do the drill, how to run the route, 
how to get um the right stance and start whether we're working on release drills um cone drills ladder drills or just conditioning in general just pushing the younger guys um showing them that it's important to keep coming back you know it's like some people will make it and get where they need to go and then not come back me i'm always right. going to resort back to my roots and help those so they can get out as well so they can achieve their dreams as well because when i was younger i had that you know but yep. before supreme athlete was around there was none of that you know if you had a father figure or an older brother like me who were actively in your lives then you had someone to to help you and to push you but me i right. want to same way i still need an older brother i still have Coach Mark, I still have my dad, I still have Stack, who's now at Syracuse, you know, and just having a mentor and an older brother, both as a coach and as a, um, as like a, like a, like a brother figure is, it's important. It's very important. So to be able to be that for the, for the kids back home is, it's amazing. Like every time I go back home, I, I see the younger guys and, Hey, what's up, Nas? How's it going? You know, we, we dap, we hug each other up. But then it's right to work. It's right to get into the craft and working out. And then after, we'll chop it up some more. We'll talk some more. And then we go our separate ways until we see each other the next time. But that's not only with me. That's with a lot of guys that are in the program. We always, like all of us, we still go back and we help out. Even in the summertime for like seven-on-sevens or one-on-ones. Like, I'm there. I'm present. So they know, like, okay, Nas is still here. He's still around, you know? So good for the future. I don't know, man. I have so many plans for the future, but like my biggest thing would probably have to be, um, you know, I, w- I want to start my own camp. I want to start my own camp for the for the youth back home. Like I know we already have like Mangini camp and stuff like that, but I want to have like a like a skills camp for wide receivers. You know, strictly wide receivers. I don't want to see any DBs ever. I don't ever want to <laughs> see any in my camp. But in all seriousness, like a, a wide receiver camp for the for the Whiteouts back home. Because New England, like Hartford, Connecticut, that's where I'm from. And there's not a lot of exposure there. So to be able to possibly become something great from that place and then have something in foundation, like, okay, Nas did that, and now he's here helping out. He has a camp, and now we have eyes on this camp. Nassim came from here. There might be other gems here, and which there are. So, yeah, that's definitely something I want to be able to do. Where either – whether I just create the camp and then find a coach or if I help coach the camp, I mean, I'm still going to show up, but yeah, that's definitely what right. I want to do. I love it. No, it's, no, it's incredible. And, and like you said, like just being able to do all those different things and, and continue to build on top of that as you grow throughout your career, even after uh, to give back. Right. And I think that's, that's so important because you know, the, the kids that look up to you, they still see you coming back, even though you're playing at Dartmouth and moving on in your career, like they still see you coming back home. And, and helping out the community, right? And helping out the youth and, and, and working with them and skills and really developing their game and their craft. Uh, and, and, that, and that shows that just you're, you're passionate about it and you're there to help and give a helping hand. And, and I think that's that's truly inspirational. Uh, kind of going more into your overall vision for your career, Nas, what does that look like, you know, as, as you continue to, to go through your journey? My overall career really looks like, um, you know, college now, whatever the path may be, whether it be one year at UMass Dartmouth and then, you know, regaining my, my division one eligibility and going elsewhere or um, whatever. It's really whatever God has in store for me. But my plan personally would be, um, you know, NFL. NFL is definitely a big dream of mine, something that's been talked about through my household because my father actually had a chance to be drafted with the, um, the Jacksonville Jaguars, but he was um, he was deployed, so, he, you know, he couldn't go. But right. um just having that opportunity to possibly be something of that nature, um, coming from like having, you know, I'm six five, um, I'm building onto my frame, just wanna be as big, strong, fast as possible. NFL and or CFL, but you know, then now they have the, the XFL, USFL merger. Right. So there's a there's a bunch of possibilities when it right. comes to um being a pro football player and all roads can be led to the NFL or greater. But um I definitely have Hall of Fame dreams from Hartford, Connecticut. That's definitely something that I see for myself. Um, but aside from that, I definitely want to be, um, after my football career is expired, I want to be on ESPN. I want to be like Stephen A. Smith, man. That's my guy. Shout out Stephen Hello. A. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big sports fan, so um, I watch you know college basketball, college football. I probably do a little pick 'em and a little fantasy pools, but um, – There you go. 
Yeah, I love I love sports, and what I'm actually in college for is journalism. So I uh, want to get my my master's, you know. So when I'm done, I could get my pretty face on TV, and you know, report on the sport that I love, whether it be football, basketball, or whatever. I love it, and maybe you'll come and help out uh, in our podcast as we get you know more more future athletes and on, on our episodes. You could be the face of that too. Of course, of course, I'd love to. I definitely. That's love awesome, to. man. That's awesome, Naz. Nice. And, and kind of like you know, we, we always wrap up soon, but uh, you know, more so like just more of your side hustles and passions. You know, before we wrap up, what does that look like to you when you do have free time on your hands? As you, I know, of su- being a student athlete, there's a lot that you're juggling. You know, when you when you do have some free time, Naz. What are some things that you like to do, whether it's some hustles that you like to work on or passions or things that you like to just enjoy? What, what are some things that you like to do? Um, like passions wise, I'm really big on like just staying active. So we have an intramural basketball team here. So I've joined that. So, um, you know, we lift three, four times a week. But on Thursdays, we go play intramural basketball. So I'm in there right now, you know, grinding for a championship, grinding for an intramural championship. Um, That's awesome. I used to play basketball in high school. My friends might say I'm not a hooper, but I give them buckets <laughs> anyway. And if you I see this, it. you know. Um, I love it. But uh, what else do I like? Man, I'm a big Xbox guy. I love Xbox. I got this pro controller. I love Xbox. I play, I play Apex. I was going to say, what's your, what's your go-to game? I, I love Apex. But, you, you know, we all know I'm waiting for CFB 25. And then yep. I'm done with everything that's not CFB 25 or GTA 5. I mean, GTA 6. When GTA 6 comes out. But that's awesome. strictly CFB. That's um, awesome. I do enjoy um, reading my Bible. It helps me get, you know, more in tune with myself, uh, more in tune with my religion. And, like, when I'm stressed, it helps calm me down. I'm a big thinker, so it definitely helps calm me down. Yeah. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. I love it. I'm I really love it. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And, and before we wrap up, we always ask a question, but, you know, I wanted to also touch base on as you've been with Burst for, for a while and seeing as we had some pivots and, and things that we've done so far, mm-hmm. now that we're gearing up to launch, you know, our marketplace product, connecting, you know, student athletes, more opportunities all across the globe. What excites you the most about that to be able to still, you know, work on your NIL and being able to collaborate with executives, CEOs, startups, you know, other brands and businesses out there? What excites you the most about that? So, um, you know, we actually had this conversation the other day, and I was pretty. I had some pretty strong reactions to uh, the things you were telling me. So, um, what I can say is, I definitely am excited for the app to launch because I have a lot of content that I want to get out there. But I love I'm it. definitely excited for um, the the opportunities to network and build uh, more stronger connections, whether it be like helping market or just um like an, like another podcast for say like just just the opportunity to help market and network with um other companies for sure absolutely absolutely and if old spice yeah, and nike's in the audience yeah. listening pay attention yeah. because Nas harrison is, is ready to work with you and, and get things going but before we you know now that we wrap up we always ask this question Nas, what would be three pieces of advice that you would give to the next generation that can help them whether it's in their career and life business, sports, what would be those three pieces of advice that you would share with the next generation looking up to you? Three pieces of advice that I would give to the younger generation or just anybody watching. Hard work goes a long way. It doesn't matter how talented you are. Everyone hears it. I know they get tired of hearing it, but if you don't work hard, there will be no eyes on you at all. Two, get yourself a trainer. It doesn't matter how good you are. Get yourself a trainer. They may see things that you don't see and can help you work on things that you don't even know about yet. And three, the biggest thing of them all is just stay humble and just stay working because it has been five years since I've last played football, like fully padded up. Um, From COVID to my brother passing away, it's just been a whole lot. And if you would have told me back then, hey, you're not going to play. It's 2019. I'm just leaving out of prep school, college dreams. You tell me, hey, you're not going to play for five years. I'm going to look at you like, okay, is something bad going to happen to me? You know? But, um, you know, God's plan is, is ultimately how it always falls out. So just stay in prayer, stay working, and um, 
if you can find a trainer if you're in the new england area tap in with supreme athlete um coach mark is is, is literally coach mark ct on instagram and supreme athlete straight like that tap in if you're in the new england area and get you some work I love that. Well, first off, no, sorry to hear about your, your brother passing. And I think that just goes to show what you all, what you said just there is that, you know, life throws challenges uh, that people don't expect. Right. And, you know, seeing that like you had to overcome a lot of challenges the past five years, but to still be persistent in, in, in your pursuit and uh, your passion of, of the sport of football and, and still be at it. Right. Just shows that like you're, you're, you're going through all the things that you mentioned, right. Number one, and just stay hardworking. It goes a long way and it does pay off. You said number two to really get yourself a trainer. I think that applies even the youth that maybe be they might be against that, right? Thinking they can do it all by themselves, but getting that help, right? A trainer, a mentor, people, other coaches and resources that can help you. Um, you said you know the third one to just stay humble and consistently be working, um, and that all adds up and compounds over time. So Nas, you, you are a living testament of, of all those things that you mentioned. So definitely appreciate you sharing those that knowledge. Yep. So true. So true. Well, Nas, thank you again for being on the show. We had a great conversation. You dropped a lot of knowledge and gems. So I hope everybody in the audience that was listening really appreciated everything of Nas's story. Stay tuned to him and his upcoming season later this year, as well as more things that he has in story. There's a lot of content he's about to release. So stay tuned to his social uh, channels. Follow him all over social media and stay tuned uh, to, to future stuff from Nas Harrison. I appreciate you for being on the show, man. I love it.